AI. It's all over the place. I love using AI since it appeared and I know many of you too. However, I think they are going too far with the promises what AI can actually accomplish. And that's why I'm making this video. It's not only based on my own experience, but on hundreds of our members who are professionals using AI or at least try to use AI at their work in various industries, different company sizes and so on. And that's why I think in this video, this will be really insightful and maybe many of you can relate to the conclusions here, but it's not about bashing AI and saying it's just nonsense. It's about providing you the right approach on how to leverage AI in the best way possible when it comes to work productivity. So there are four productivity tool categories that I want to discuss in this video when it comes to AI. We will talk about note-taking apps and how they implemented AI. The next big category that appeared was the AI meeting notes, where you can invite AI note-takers to your meeting and they will take your notes and send you the summaries afterwards. Then we will talk about project management tools and planner applications that adapt more and more AI to help you plan out your projects and improve work. And why this is a big challenge, we will discuss in this video too. And last but not least, we talk about these all-in-one solutions. They really try to add AI in every corner of their very complex applications. We will talk about ClickUp, but also Notion, which are great examples in this regards. It seems a bit to me like when everybody wanted to go paperless or need to go digital. Every company was saying we need to go digital using digital systems. And now it's the same trend with AI. But if you force the things without really thinking about why you need it and how to implement it in the best way possible, it will just add more friction to the system than it actually helps you. And there's no difference to AI either. And once we realize this, we already have a complete different approach on how to adapt to new digital solutions. So if you have the pressure that you're not on top of everything AI, this video is for you. It should release a lot of anxiety as you probably need AI a lot less than you originally thought. Okay, let's talk about note-taking apps. Well, in fact, I met Paco, our co-founder, through a note-taking app called MEM. Those who follow the channel know what I'm talking about. It is the note-taking app that promised that you just need to throw things in there and AI will make the context building around it. And it was amazing because it was the first time where we got serendipity on autopilot. The moment I started writing a new note, it looked through my other notes and showed me relevant information. And as neither Paco nor I are native English speakers, it was really interesting to see that we were finally able to mix languages in the same note-taking app, in my case, German and English, and it's still based on semantics, found the information that I was searching for, no matter in what language I was searching. It was really impressive. And it was even before the ChatGPT era began. They weren't able to keep up with the speed of AI. This being said, now that I'm launching MEM 2.0, but they made a lot of improvements in the back end, and I'm curious to test this out again. But since then, Paco moved on to Tana, which was then a dedicated outliner note-taking app. Well, that goes far beyond outlining, obviously, as you can have tables in there using super text. But they also had a great AI integration. So you are able in Tana to have your custom prompts. And then we have tools like Reflect, another amazing example on how you can properly implement AI in a note-taking app. And Tana and Reflect both excelled on sending audio messages to the note-taking apps that directly get transcribed and then even using prompts to automatically process this information. But over the time, there's nearly no note-taking app left that hasn't implemented AI, at least those I can think of. Obviously, we have the handwriting note-taking apps on the iPad, like Apple Notes and Notability, GoodNotes and so on. AI is not such a big thing for those. But when it comes to my favorite tool, like Heptabase, they recently added AI too, and we can chat with our whiteboards and many things. So this is really great stuff. However, am I using it a lot? No. Because what I realized is I'm using ChatGPT still a lot more and Claude from Anthropic, the competitor to ChatGPT. Depending on the use case, I'm using either or. And I'm very specific with my requests and prompts, provide the right context and get the best outcome. Paco and I and also our members realized over time, the more context you give the AI, the more confusing it gets. And we will get to this when we come to the all-in-one solutions later on. But the big problem here is really AI gets confused, what you actually need, what you're looking for. And also it's not an 
note taking app, but in this context, Superhuman as an email management tool is very successful implementing AI there too. But in the end, it's all based on the same principles. AI goes through the content, it tries to find the relevant information and it uses the typical integration to improve your writing and things like that. So yeah, when we think about how AI replaced any of my productivity tools, it would be Grammarly. I was using Grammarly to ensure that my writing has the right spelling and grammar. The moment ChatGPT came out and other solutions, it replaced completely. And I think that's why we also see now Grammarly going together with Superhuman. We come into the next category, which are the AI meeting notes. As I said, I'm sure if you're a professional and you're in a Zoom call or in a Google meeting, you probably have seen these AI assistants joining and taking notes, right? And we've been using for years MeetGeek. It's a really great one, but obviously we also tested Fireflies, Granola and Otter and many others. We stick with MeetGeek as the templates that we can use in there and the way it structures the summaries and so on is really great there. And now obviously you can invite now Notion, you can invite ClickUp, even Loom now has their meeting note taker as well. And that's something that always worries me because the more specific a tool is in a specific area, the better they will work and trying to serve them all is always a challenge. We still use Meet Geek in the background, but the important thing is to mention, we never looked up any of the meeting notes. It's great it's, that it is recording and that we have the transcript and we have even the video recordings and everything, and that's like a backup. So if you really need to look up at some point something, it would be that. But what we recognized over the years and the reason why we never look up anything in Meet Geek is the fact that we have a highly efficient system behind. So the moment we have the meeting, all the information ends up already in the final destination. It saves a lot of time thinking about going back after the meeting to the meeting notes that I cannot even trust 100% that AI got everything right that was talked about as it is everything contextual related to previous meetings and things like that. It's really hard to trust the summaries and what we realized is the action steps that these note takers give us never works. What gets really close is Granola. It's a hybrid of a note taking app and the meeting notes and you can take notes during the meeting and it uses these notes in order to make a better meeting summary out of it. However, still in our use case, it makes no sense. Either it goes into my PKM system, my personal knowledge management system, or it ends up directly in a single source of truth for a company, which would in this case be ClickUp inside a task as a decision that was made or as business information or you name it. So that's why I I can say if AI meeting note takers would disappear, our system would keep running without any issues. The, the problem here is, and I have seen this working in corporate already, we've been sitting in bigger meetings and there was a dedicated person just hired to take notes. And then this person afterwards, we're writing up meeting notes and sending them emails to every to all the attendees as a summary for everybody to know. And there was already the problem. This is a human being sitting in a project meeting who has no clue about the details around the project. And this leads to leaving out important information or adding information that was misunderstood and so on, maybe leading to another meeting and meetings. And that's why meeting notes, meeting summaries, meeting minutes, especially sent via email, we always say they should be avoided at all costs because they should end up in your system directly, which saves so much time and gives so much clarity as all the information is in the right places, as I just commented before. Talking about personal assistance, let's go to the project management slash planner applications that try to add AI too. A common one would be Motion, a tool that claims that their AI will manage not only your own calendar, but even the whole team's calendar and also the due dates and projects and moves these due dates around. And this scares me to death when I hear something like that. If I go to work in the morning and I open my calendar and everything is moved around just based on some conclusions and artificial intelligence made for me and for the whole team, I haven't seen anyone who is able to leverage this. It's like hiring a personal assistant, like the one I just mentioned for the meeting notes, give them full access to the project management tools and the calendars, and then let move the due dates around just because they see a slot somewhere. Hey, 
let's move this over there. It makes just sense in the whole order or something like that. It's out of context. It's the project manager who needs to make the decision how everything should move. And as we do it at the Payless Movement, we have the this week, next week approach. So we always work in a sequential order on the highest priorities. So there's no need to even have due dates. We just need to know what we need to work on this week. And if you want to learn more about this, I have endless videos on this channel too about it. That's something we see many times. We have executives joining the Payless Movement in our coaching program and they tell us, I just hired a personal assistant. I'm overwhelmed. I'm hitting a ceiling and I'm hiring a human personal assistant to help me to reduce friction. This can work, but only if you're crystal clear about the workflows that you have established over time. If you're not clear what you're doing every day, then the personal assistant will just add additional friction to you because there will be a lot more back and forth. That's why we always recommend to our members first to sit down and think about your own workflows, realize them and optimize them because there's always hours in a week that you can save just by thinking about what you're doing and then optimizing individual process steps. And I'm talking here even about work, about work. And it goes a long way when we talk about productivity. Where do I store notes? Where do I retrieve information? How do I manage my team? How do I manage my email management tool? Many things that come a long way when you optimize yourself before you even need to think about hiring a person or letting AI in in order to do it for you. And for AI, it's the same thing. Once everything is crystal clear and you have very specific workflow steps that you can hand over them to a person to reduce overall friction from the workflow, but you're crystal clear about the intersections where you still need to be the person who handles this part, then it really makes sense to hire somebody or outsource or even give it away to a complete different department, things like that. Without this clarity, it makes really no sense to hire anyone or get AI involved. That's that's why I personally don't believe that tools like Motion actually work. I never met any person or any team who showed me that this tool manages their projects on the fly and updates the due dates and so on. I'm not talking about the project management tool itself and the capabilities it might have. I'm just talking about giving AI access and letting it handle all the due dates inside the project management tool. And now let's talk about the all-in-one solutions. We are using ClickUp, for example, since 2.0. And uh, I personally rolled out Asana for more than a thousand people in the company I was working in. I was personally using Asana too. We had 16,000 tasks every month that we were working in there and dozens of projects we've been handling. So it works and it reduces friction and anxiety even from people who were always saying, oh, not another app. Once you have a simple system in place that everybody can follow. And it's the same that we apply to ClickUp. ClickUp can be completely overwhelming and overkill for so many people who are getting started with it because it has all the bells and whistles that you can imagine, obviously because they claim to be the one to replace them all, okay? And, and they really follow this, but that can be overwhelming. That's why, again, we have to set our own boundaries to really leverage what these tools are good at and ignore the rest. So this is where we then get something else instead that excels in these specific categories much better. We love ClickUp for what it is. We know the quirks in ClickUp too, but we are highly efficient using it. And we keep trying to use the built-in AI in ClickUp too. But especially when it comes to this ClickUp brain where you have a chat and ask for content inside your knowledge base, it never got it right. That's just what it is. Whenever I tried to search for something, it was impossible to find something. Now we also have a chat functionality in there. That's where we move from Slack to ClickUp too. And there also you can ask your chat channels about something and we ask about something very specific, you know, how many messages of this type appeared and it just didn't get it right. This really worries me because I cannot trust the results that AI delivers to me. And I made similar testings in Notion to see if AI is really better in there and I have similar results. So it's impossible to replace our structure that we have to quickly find what we are looking for just by throwing things in there and let AI do the job to find the things. A very challenging thing is outdated information, obviously. The more you add to a system, the more confusing it will get for the AI. What is the latest information? Obviously, you can look at uh, last modified dates and things like that, but still, it is too similar. It tries to compare these things and then I'm not getting what I was asking for. Again, that's the reason 
reason why if I have something to think about, I always go to tools like ChatGPT and Claude to have a lengthy discussion about a specific topic and then the conclusion ends up in my actual tool. ClickUp implemented something like doc verification. I think that's really interesting and that's the right approach to do things. You can have some docs that you say they are verified wikis and the AI will prioritize these docs. But again, we are not even a big team in ClickUp. I cannot imagine having thousands of people in ClickUp working. All the amount of tasks and knowledge that they will add, that AI really makes sense. It always starts on the foundation. The better you have a structure and all these tools that I just mentioned, the more likely it is that AI can actually help you. We also started using the agents in ClickUp and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It's really something like with automations. I mean, when you look at the back end of the paperless movement, you will see we have literally hundreds of automations in the back end running using Sapia, using AI agents, our publications of these videos and blog posts. A lot of management happens too with AI, but never autonomous. There's always human interaction involved and it's very specific tasks that we give AI where we that we identified to overcome a specific friction point in our system. If you want to learn more about how to set up your system from the ground up, then follow the three steps that we keep saying. First, analyze your system, then actually systemize it if you haven't done it yet, and then you optimize it. And the optimization step, that's really the eye opener for our members when they go through the i journey and the different courses. They end up not only with a productivity system, but with the skill set to lay out business workflows and identify exactly the friction points where they find them the tool tool that actually enhances this specific process step or hire a person in doing this too. So in the end of the day, it's you who will know best all the balls that you have in the air and how to manage them. If you're overwhelmed and you want to gain time, then the first step would be to really sit down and think about what's going on in your business or with your team, what are all the things that you handle and ask yourself, do I actually have a system in place that manages all of this? Is everything crystal clear, all the workflows? Do I have standard operating procedures that are not overkill? Things like that. We have a very easy way to do that with our automation like a pro course where it's less about all automation and more about optimization of your business workflows. So if you're really interested in optimizing your overall system, I invite you to join us in the Payless Move membership and check out this course. It will change a lot. And then you will also start using AI in a complete different way. Thanks for watching and I cannot wait to see the comments below to see how you leveraging AI at work. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so I can catch you up in the next one.